hello guys welcome once more to another video on our youtube channel so in this video guys i want to integrate like a professional so um a student sent me an integral and integral said i should integrate the x divided by one plus sine two x all right so i know there are many methodologies to do this right? um let me do this in a very unique way follow kindly all right so first of all i'm going to write 1 plus sine 2x as 1 plus 2 sine x cos x okay now what is 1 1 is cos 1 is the same as cos squared x plus sine squared x then plus the 2 sine sine x cos x but this is a perfect square cos x plus sine x all squared if you do this you are going to have cos squared x plus 2 cos x sine x plus sine squared x so i've not changed anything okay now um if you just replace the denominator here with cos x plus sine x all squared it does not seem make sense so look at what i'm going to do so i'm going to write this in a very peculiar form what is that form i'm going to write it in the form arrow the cosine of x plus minus alpha yes all squared okay but i don't actually um in fact i know that uh, my r is going to give me root 2 if you convert it and your alpha is going to give you tan inverse of 1 which is pi on 4 so that is it so this when you square root 2 we have 2 then the cosine squared of x minus pi on 4 okay so it therefore means that my integral given is just the same as the integral of the x divided by 2 times the cosine squared of x minus pi on 4. Okay, so I'll factorize a half and I'll have the integral. Remember that 1 over cos squared is sec squared. So the second squared of x minus pi on 4, the x. But it is clear that if I differentiate the tangent function, I get a second function, the second squared. It means if I integrate the second squared, I should get a tangent function. So, so this is half. So this is equal to half the tangent of x minus pi on 4. Because when you differentiate x minus pi on 4, you just get the x. So plus a constant of integration. So if you wish, you could simplify all of these. But nevertheless, here is the result of the integral now let's let's get back to what most of you are going to do um most of you are going to say okay let me use half angle identity in fact let us actually simplify all of this okay we have half now we know that the tan of a minus b has its identity and what is that identity that identity is simply equal to than x minus than pylon 4 and tan pylon 4 is 1 divided by 1 plus tan x tan pylon 4 tan pylon 4 is still 1 then plus a constant of integration that's what we have so this is it now let us use a different methodology to do this and see if we are going to have the same result in fact this is an indefinite integral so you can have various different different results but once it is definite we should have the same answer okay now we are going to use um the um, relationship between sine 2x and tan x now what is sine 2x is simply 2t divided by 1 plus t squared what is t our t is equal to tan x okay all right so with that said we now have that 1 plus sine 2x is actually equal to 1 plus its equivalence which is this okay so the LCM is 1 plus t squared. The numerator will be our pop t squared plus 2t plus 1. But the numerator is a perfect square, which is what? t plus 1 all squared divided by t squared plus 1. Now, since our t is actually equal to tan x, what does it mean? We differentiate both sides. If we differentiate both sides with respect to x, we get oh sorry about this this means that dt is equal to 
um, sec squared x dx. Therefore, we have dx. In fact, our integral has dx, so dx is equal to dt divided by sec squared x. But sec squared x is the same as 1 plus tan squared x, but tan x is t, so we just have 1 plus t squared. Alright, so the integral becomes the integral. In the place of dx in the numerator, I replace it with dt divided by 1 plus t squared, then times 1 divided by 1 plus sine 2x. But what's 1 plus sine 2x? It is all of this, okay? So if I replace this here, you see that the denominator here will just go back to the numerator. So you just have something like this, okay? And then you're going, you're, you're, you're going to have all of this. So this is all you have. Now you see that the quantity here cancels with the quantity here and you'll be left to actually integrate dt divided by c plus 1 all squared which is the same as integrating c plus 1 to the power negative 2 dt and this is a very common integral to integrate. You just have 1 divided by negative 2 plus 1 negative 2 plus 1 now, what do you do next? Which is negative 1. So, then what do you do next? You have to differentiate the t plus 1. You have 1. Then you multiply it with the t plus 1 to the power negative 2 plus 1. Which is negative 1. Plus a constant of integration. So, this is negative 1 divided by t plus 1. Plus a constant of integration. So, um, but what is your t? Your t is tan x. So, this is negative 1 divided by than x than x plus 1 plus the constant of integration so this is an alternative form to the result okay so you see when i did it the first time i have tan x minus 1 in numerator no problem there's a half there, there, there is a half there okay so it's an indefinite integral so you can have many answers but if i say okay we're integrating from 0 to 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 let's say 0 to pi right you clearly see that you're going to if you put 0 0 to pi, if you're integrating from 0 to pi, let's compute the two results. So from 0 to pi, I'm just going to remove my constant of integration. Then I compute the final result here from 0 to pi. From 0 to pi. Okay. And doing this, I'm going to replace pi. I will have half into tan pi is 0 minus 1. is negative 1 divided by tan pi is 0 divided by 1. Now then, oh, we have a half outside there. We have a half outside there. So the result is going to give us negative one for the upper bound minus the lower bound. Tan zero, um, tan zero is tan zero is is zero as well. Minus one is negative one. So we have minus negative one divided by one. So negative one here minus negative one is zero so the result is going to give us zero okay what about computing this result here from zero to pi if you rather computing this result from zero to pi okay um if we fit pi we get tan pi zero so you have negative one divided by one is negative one minus the denominator minus the lower bound Tan zero is zero minus negative one. You see, get you see, get zero at the end of the day. So you see, um, the two result definitely will give you the same answer. So guys, basically, um, I just wanted to show you guys how you can integrate functions using different methods, and um, those methods are still going to work provided they are correct. So you could use your, they, they call this half angle identity, I don't really know, and I used a different methodology, something I developed, so no matter the method you use, we need the result at the end. So guys, um, see you guys in the next video, thank you guys for watching, subscribe to the channel, ask your questions in the comment section, if you need the videos on integration, say in the comment section that you need the videos on integration, so I'm going to do a brief summary vision integration and upload so you can be able to watch see you guys in the next video stay blessed and i wish you all the best for your upcoming gc advanced level evaluation